This video will show a quick and easy way for beginners to sketch in Creo Parametric. And in this video, I'll be using Creo Parametric 3.0. A later video will go into more detail and show the nuances of sketching in Creo Parametric. And I'll do that one in Creo Parametric 5.0. And so the quick and easy way to get into sketch mode is to start off by selecting the flat plane or surface or datum plane that you want to sketch on. And that's known as the sketch plane. And so first pick with the left mouse button, will select a feature in the model. The second pick will allow me to select geometry like this surface. Now, if I click on the sketch tool in the ribbon, I'm taken into sketch mode. And for this video, normally I work with my model set to shading with edges, but I'm gonna set to no hidden line because I think it'll make it easier for you to see. When I get into sketch mode, I get these blue dashed lines on the screen, and those are known as sketch references. And you can think of them as sort of the horizontal and vertical axes of your sketch. You can add additional sketch references, but I'll show you how to do that on the fly later on. And so what I'm going to do now is create the geometry that I want to use. In the ribbon, you have your different tools for creating lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, ellipses, splines, and so forth. But one of the easiest ways to get to the tools that you use most often is by holding down the right mouse button. And in the pop-up menu, I get some of the more common commands like creating a chain of lines. And so I will select that, and then I will position my mouse where I want to start sketching. And the way that you create geometry is by using left clicks. I will left click to start my line. And you can see that I get this rubber band effect as my mouse moves around. And also, as I start to get close to being horizontal, I get this little H on the screen, which says that, hey, if I left click right now, this will be a horizontal line. But I actually want this line to be vertical. So as I approach vertical, it snaps to that and I get this V on the screen. And when I'm happy with the approximate length of the line, I will left click again. And my first line is created. And what you'll notice as I move my mouse around the screen is that my last end point is my new start point. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And for my next line, I actually want this one to be horizontal. So I'll sketch out the approximate length. And again, I'll do another left mouse click in order to create that line. And once again, my last end point is my new start point. But for the next line I want to create, I don't want my last end point to be my new start point. So if I middle mouse click once, that allows me to reposition my mouse where I want to start sketching, but I'm still in the line tool. If you take a look at the ribbon, you'll see that the line icon is still depressed in the ribbon. So now I can reposition my mouse. It'll actually snap to my original start point, and then I can go and create my lines. And then I'm just doing a bunch of left mouse clicks. And let me just go and create three more lines. And now I'm done creating lines. And so if I want to finish, I'll hit the middle mouse button two times. Hitting the middle mouse button twice will take you out of whatever operation that you're doing in sketch mode. And that's a little fail safe that you might want to use if you ever get stuck and you just want to go back to sort of like step one. All right. So now when i finish sketching my lines you see all these different dimensions on the screen and these are known as weak dimensions these are suggestions from creo parametric for how you can control your sketch but one thing that i find that helps is rather than jumping in and changing dimensions it might help if you create all your geometry up front now, you don't have to do that. That's just a suggestion, and even I don't follow that all the time. And so for the last piece of geometry I'm going to use to finish my sketch is the arc tool. And so I'll go ahead and click on it, and then I'll position at my start point, 
and then click my endpoint and then I'll drag it out approximately how big I want it to be and when I'm happy I'll hit the middle mouse button oops didn't get it I mean hit the left mouse button left click left click and then position it out and then left click again and I've got my arc created and to get out of arc creation again all I have to do is hit the middle mouse button and that takes me out of the tool and so now I've got all these different weak dimensions on the computer screen one thing that I find that helps before changing my dimensions is by adding what are called constraints to geometry and you can see the constraints up here in the ribbon there are nine different ones of them and all that constraints are they're just rules that you're placing on your geometry and so for example this arc that I created on the end I actually want it to be tangent at both ends and so what I can do is I can click on the tangent tool in the ribbon here and pick the first entity I want to be tangent and the second entity and it throws in my tangency constraint which you can see by the little T on the computer screen and what you might not have noticed is as I added that tangency constraint some of my weak dimensions went away and you'll see that again when I add another tangency constraint this time I'm going to pick the line first and then the arc the order does not matter so that's good that's good for my tangency constraint I also want this other line over here to be vertical and I can click the vertical tool in the ribbon or what you can do is if you select the line then you can hold down the right mouse button menu or hold down the right mouse button and you'll get a pop-up menu and in the pop-up menu because I had a line selected it's going to suggest some different constraints to me and I can say hey you know what this line I want it to be vertical so I'll go ahead and click on it and there I have all the geometry and I've put in my constraints in order to say these are the rules that I want imposed on my geometry so now I'm going to take care of my dimensions and so Creo Parametric sort of throws a bunch of these dimensions on the screen and if you left click and then drag it you can reposition the dimensions and if you want to change the value of a dimension just double click on it in this case over here this line I'm going to change it to a value of 16 and the sketch dynamically updates and that's good if you want you know some of the dimensions that Creo Parametric is suggesting to you. you can just go ahead and double click on them and change the value and when you do that it changes your weak dimensions to a strong dimension but then I take a look at the screen and I realize you know what some of these other dimensions um I really don't I'm not I don't want those for controlling my sketch and those maybe aren't the dimensions that I want to appear in a drawing later on so I'm going to create the dimensions that I want and in order to start geometry creation you can either click this icon that says normal that means normal dimensions regular dimensions uh, on the screen or again I'm a big fan of right mouse button functionality if I hold down the right mouse button oops I gotta make sure I have oh there I have it there is the dimension tool and if you want to measure the length uh, or excuse me if you want to create a dimension for the length of an entity like a line I recommend picking that line itself and so there's a difference between picking the entity and picking the endpoint. So let me show it to you with this angled line over here so to create a dimension what you're going to do is you're going to pick what you want to dimension with the left mouse button and then locate the dimension with the middle mouse button and sometimes where you locate the middle mouse button makes a difference for example if I pick this endpoint and this endpoint and then position my mouse out to the side when I middle mouse click you'll notice that I end up getting the vertical distance between those two points I'm gonna hit the undo button and then let's go ahead and create a dimension again and I'm gonna pick the same entities the two endpoints with the left mouse button and this time I'm gonna position my mouse up here when I middle mouse click and now I'm getting the horizontal distance between those two lines but 
I actually want to control the length of that line itself. So, like I mentioned, when you are dimensioning, just pick the entity that you want and then middle mouse button. And now I'm actually getting the length of that line. Next up for my dimensions in here. Okay, let's take a look at the arc with this arc. Uh, I want to control the diameter of it. If I pick an arc or a circle one time with the left mouse button and then middle mouse click, I'm going to end up getting a radius dimension. But if I want the diameter dimension, you're going to pick the arc or circle two times with the left mouse button. So I'll left click once, left click twice, and then middle mouse button. And that way I can get a diameter dimension. If you take a look in the upper right hand corner of the screen, when I created that diameter dimension, Creo Parametric is giving me a warning. It's saying, hey, you're trying to over dimension your sketch. And Creo won't allow you to do that because it wouldn't make sense for me to have both a radius dimension and a diameter dimension for the same arc because I can't control them independently. The diameter is twice the radius. And so what it's saying is choose one of these dimensions that you don't want and then you can click the delete button. And that way it gets rid of the radius dimension and allows me to change the value. And I just hit the enter key to keep my previous value. All right, let's see in here. Oh, one other thing I want to show you about uh, an arc dimension. Let me hit the undo button. If you do have a dimension for the radius, you can select it and right mouse click and hold. And from the pop-up menu, you can choose to convert it to a, a diameter dimension. Another dimension I want to create in here is that I've got these two lines at an angle. And so we can click on the dimension icon. And then just like before, I'm using left mouse clicks to pick the entities I want to dimension. And then this is another situation in which where you locate the middle mouse button makes a difference. If I want to control the angle between those two entities, I'll position my mouse between them in middle mouse button. And there I get my dimension created and then adjust the value and I'm good to go. But let's say I wanted a different angle. Let's hit the undo button a couple times. And I'll use my right mouse button to bring up the pop-up menu and then choose dimension. And I'm going to use left mouse clicks to pick the same entities as before. But this time I'm going to position my mouse up over here. And what you'll notice is instead of getting the angle between the entities, I'm getting the complementary angle. In other words, 180 degrees minus that angle. Let's hit the undo button. And I'm going to dimension again. And I'll do left mouse click and left mouse click. And this time if I position my mouse, say over here, now I get the obtuse angle. In other words, the angle that's greater than 180 degrees. So just be aware when you're dimensioning and creating the angle dimensions, position your, your mouse where you want the dimension to be created, and that controls what kind of angle dimension you're getting. All right, for the general shape of the sketch, I've just got one more dimension I want to create. Maybe I want to control the distance from that line to my arc and then middle mouse button and change this value, say, to 12, and my sketch updates. Now, I've got two last weak dimensions. Oops, we're holding down the wrong key on the keyboard. I've got two last dimensions in my sketch, and those locate my sketch on my sketch plane. And what happened is, is that, again, when you go into sketch mode, you get these things called sketch references. And a lot of times, Creo Parametric will give you my your default datum planes. In this case, my default datum planes are located off my geometry. And it doesn't really make sense for me to locate my sketch relative to these planes that are out in space. It doesn't make so sense to someone who's going to manufacture or inspect this later on. And so maybe I actually want to dimension it from the bottom surface and the side surface. 
And so when I'm creating my dimension, what you can do is you can select the entity that you want to, to dimension, and then I'm just going to highlight the surface I want to dimension to, and then left click, and then middle mouse button, and there I have my dimension. I'll change the value and change it to four. And you'll notice that because I dimensioned to that bottom surface, I get this blue dashed line. And, uh, and again, that's a sketch reference. When you dimension to an entity that isn't in your list of sketch references, Creo Parametric will automatically add a sketch reference to it. And for my last one, let's go ahead and dimension from this surface to that surface over there, middle mouse button, and I get my dimension, type in the value that I want, and my sketch is created. By the way, I've been sketching in 3D. If you click on this button in the quick access toolbar, that allows you to sketch looking directly at your sketch plane, and sometimes that helps you. All right, so that is enough to get you started in Sketcher. <clears throat> I'm done with sketching and I want to get out of sketch mode. To do that, you can hit the OK button in the ribbon or if you're sketching, you don't want all that mouse travel. You can right mouse click and hold and again from the pop up menu, click the OK button and my sketch is created. We change back to shading with edges and now I can take that sketch and use it to create geometry in my model. For example, by using the extrude tool. And I've got my depth drag handle and I can drag that out to whatever value that I want. Or I can double click on the depth, type in the value, and then either hit the check mark in the ribbon to complete the feature or middle mouse button. And my new feature is created. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button so that you can be informed whenever new videos are created. Thank you very much.